Um, I know the keynote was running a little later, and uh, some people are still grabbing lunch, but that's why we record these and show these later. But uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us here in LA, and thank you for joining us here for this session entitled, Welcome to the Windows 7 Desktop. Now, before we jump into the talk, um, I thought it'd be interesting to first share with you all some product philosophy we applied to uh, this version of Windows. And the philosophy is known as early and often. And the concept is pretty straightforward. And by the way, I'm, I'm not using that really bad politician's joke of having you know, elected officials vote or have you vote for them early and often in the same election. I'm talking about um, product satisfaction or customer satisfaction with their products. And we find if, if you go out and buy a product and you see the point of sale at the retail store, if you open it, unpackage it for the first time, and when you turn it on for the first time, those early experiences if they're positive, coupled with the often experiences, the ones in which you use the product day in and day out for what it's designed to do, if those early and often experiences are positive, something interesting happens. You generally like the product. Kind of makes sense. Also, what we find is if the product fails you, and I promise you, you've heard it here first, every product will fail you, be it just failing outright or it doesn't do something you thought it would do, we find that you're more likely to forgive the product if the early and the often are positive. Early and often. Hi, everyone. My name is Chathanya Serene. I'm a senior program manager on the desktop experience team. I work on the taskbar and some other desktop elements that you'll see here today. Now, it's always unfair to have one person stand on stage because there's a very, very talented team uh, both over here and back in Redmond, and all of us in a very collaborative way worked on this on these uh, features you'll see, but I'm sure I speak on behalf of all of them when I say you know, thank you for coming, and it's our great pleasure to share with you the Windows 7 desktop, what exactly early and often means to us, and more importantly, you are all developers, of course, more importantly, how you can use early and often to delight your customers. So with that, let's jump on into the presentation. Uh, here's a quick agenda of what we're going to be talking about. Um, I think it's always important to look to the past before you look to the future. So we're going to have a little fun and look over a history of Windows, uh, a brief history of Windows. Um, we're going to then talk about areas for improvement and some of the goals we identified for Windows 7. Um, and then we're going to give a detailed Windows 7 demo. Now, from a show of hands, how many people saw this morning's keynote? I assume everyone. That's good. I think Julie and Stephen did an awesome, awesome job of framing the release, and they provided a really good high-level concept of the desktop. And so what I'd like to do with you is kind of overlap, echo, and extend what they discussed and show you some more functionality that we just didn't have time to show you during the keynote. Um, and then, of course, this is the most important bullet for you guys. Um, exactly how do you extend the work we've done and how do you delight your customers? So we'll spend quite a bit of time on the best practices and all the really cool ways that you can uh, excite uh, uh, your customers. And finally, we'll have Q&A. Now, in the interest of time, I please ask that you hold your um, questions. Uh, I just want to make sure I get through this. I have a lot of content. I promise you I'll try to answer questions at the end of the session. And right after this, I'm going to the tech lounge. So you can all follow me, and I promise I'll be there as long as you need me to answer your questions. Great. I should also mention that this is a lunch session, an inter intermediate session. I will not be showing code. I just want to set that expectation. At the same time, I will be walking you through all the really exciting extensibility points. Uh, my colleague, Rob Jarrett, who's here, uh, will continue on this talk as kind of a part two. It's at 3.30 p.m. This, uh, this afternoon. It's called the Intergate uh, with the Windows 7 desktop. And he, I'm pretty much going to talk about the, the what and the why, and he'll talk about the how. So with that, let's get rocking. I'd like to call this session Back to the Future with Microsoft Windows. And again, we always think it's important to look past before you look to the future, especially, especially if the past has some really cool feature ideas that you want to resurrect, hint, hint. So, ladies and gentlemen, the year is 1985. The number one song is Wham's uh, Careless Whisper. I actually do love that song. Um, and this is the first GUI-based operating system from Microsoft uh, called Windows. Fortunately, the original name of, um, well, let's not even talk about the original one. Windows stuck, and that was good. And there are a few things I just want to call out here. One is there's something interesting at the bottom of the screen. And no, my friends, this is not the Apple dock. This predates the dock by about 15 years. It predates the next step upon which the dock is based by two years. And for you uber geeks out there, it even predates Acorn's RISC OS by two years. 
arguably, this is the ecosystem's, one of the ecosystem's first stabs at a taskbar. Now, I should be clear, it is a rudimentary taskbar. And you notice I even wrote rudimentary in the, task, in the slide, so there's no misunderstanding of this. And what I mean by this is there's a reserved amount of space at the bottom of the screen. We have some nice large icons. And those icons represent windows on your desktop. In this case, they represent minimized windows. And so if you click on these windows, they will be restored to the desktop. So again, rudimentary in that it was a dedicated real estate, large icons. And these icons, and this is a key point, these icons represent windows because we believe windows, the namesake being windows, is really what the users are trying to get to. These are the basic tasks. Uh, the other thing worth noting is it didn't really have a launch surface off the taskbar. You had that five and a quarter inch floppy disk in the corner uh, called the MS-DOS executive, and you must say it like that. And when you click on that, that takes you to kind of an uh, early version of Explorer that let you launch your, your files. Um, and it's also worth noting that each window here has its own toolbar. It may seem simple, may seem very basic. It's a core part of the Windows operating system because since the beginning, the goal was also always to allow users to multitask. And part of multitasking was that each window had its own identity. And so you see it here in Windows 1.0 and you still see it in Windows 7. Again, core to Windows, to switch to Windows, and to have each window be its own, uh, its own control uh, space. And finally, Windows 1.0 did not have uh, overlapping windows. All windows had to be tiled. So Windows 1.0, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, then we move on to 1990. Uh, I won't bore you with the number one song then. But uh, it was 1990. We had Windows 3.0. And some interesting things worth calling out. The MS-DOS executive was replaced with Program Manager, a title I kind of like. Um, and uh, as, as exciting as the concept, the rudimentary taskbar was, we kind of went away from it. And now when you minimize windows, they would be minimized to the desktop. And you can see those icons at the bottom of the screen. Um, and finally, we introduced the idea of overlapping windows. It was actually, I take that back, it was introduced in Windows 2.0, but really extended in Windows 3.0. So just a quick look at that. Um, and then we have Windows 95, which really brought back the taskbar. And now we didn't have a rudimentary taskbar. We had a taskbar. And the key parts of the taskbar, again, were a dedicated amount of real estate. We had a start menu. We had a notification area. This is the taskbar you all remember, and that's still with us to this day. Um, we also introduced the start menu, which kind of replaced some of these windows that let you launch. Um, and uh, we had caption controls. You look at the bottom, the, rather the top right portion of these windows, you see the, the famous or now ubiquitous minimize, restore, and close buttons, really standardizing this version of Windows. And um, I cheated a little bit, I apologize. Technically, Windows 95 came out in 1995. But the screenshot I've, I have here is Windows 95 with IE4, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with desktop extensions. And this came out in 1997. The reason I bring this up, not to be super uh, pedantic for you guys, but the reason I bring this up is it introduced something very, 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 very critical to the taskbar. If you notice those little icons next to the Start menu, that's Quick Launch. And Quick Launch came in as a desk ban, and what it allowed customers to finally do is give them top-level access to launch. So since, based on Windows 95, 97, been with us to this point. Um, it also gave us ideas of desk bans, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, and again, you guys are all probably super enthusiasts, and you know everything there is to know about Windows. I don't know how many people may know this, but you can actually right-click on Quick Launch, and you'll get large icons. So this is not Photoshop. In fact, if you have your machine right here, uh, running XP or Vista, uh, you can unlock your taskbar, right click on Quick Launch and do large icons. Been with us since 1997, kind of a throwback to Windows 1.0. Um, but again, it was nice that they made it, uh, that we were able to make icons large and nice click targets, but it kind of cramped the task band. This is where the windows are to switch. And so uh, it's an exciting feature, but it's off by default until now. Um, moving along. 